The Virtual Boys have been playing Nintendo since they were little. These 60 plus combined years of experience have made them experts in the field. Or at least they sure think so. Join them this week as they talk about something from the wonderful world of Nintendo. Listening to the Virtual Boys Podcast, a Nintendo podcast about Nintendo things by Nintensity. This podcast is done by four friends that talk about anything and everything Nintendo. Check out the website at Nintensity.com and be sure to follow us on social media. Be sure to subscribe and share the show with your friends. Oh, of course, enjoy the show. And welcome to the Virtual Boys Podcast, a Nintendo podcast about Nintendo things. This is episode number 110. I'm your host, David, and I aspire to be like Princess Peach, a Rank X Charger, accompanied with Jordan. Not many games, less features, less fun. And James. Luigi just can't catch a break. Yeah, his switch gets thwompified and he's in last place all the time. That poor boy. Yeah, Poor boy. I think Nintendo really hates him. And he died. <laughs> he oh, died. Yeah. <laughs> but now he has his own game, so hey. Or his not his own yeah. game, but a sequel or whatever. So there you go. Yep. So uh, the Nintendo Online service, Nintendo Switch Online service came out last night uh, as of the recording of this podcast. And we now understand at least a little bit more about the service. So we're going to talk about that this episode. Uh, but first, just want to remind you to check out our Patreon page. These episodes go up early as a reward for those that support us. Check that out at patreon.com slash intensity and come talk about this episode and other things on our discord at nintendo.city slash discord. Now it's time to go to the cloud. But first, uh, since Jordan wasn't here last week um, and has graced us with his presence, <laughs> um, do you want to give us some of your <clears throat> thoughts on the Nintendo Direct last week since uh, you didn't have a chance to talk about it uh, with us? So the Direct was it had more than I expected it to have. I yeah. did not expect it to have very much. Even still, it felt kind of mediocre, I okay. think. Um, just the way they revealed things where it's like, here's Luigi's Mansion with no indication that it was Luigi's Mansion 3 as opposed to any of the other two. Uh, yeah. There was they, they just didn't hype up their reveals. Uh, Animal Crossing was just a splash screen that may as well have just said now in development, but it's coming out next year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Isabel was kind of a letdown. I think I would. It's weird to say that because she's a newcomer, she's a letdown, but she was an echo would be fine, even though it was probably the same amount of work either way. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> um, because I don't think they put a ton into her as to be a new fighter as opposed to just an echo. Yeah. She has different moves, but all those moves are definitely borrowing from other areas of the game. Uh, Animation wise, feature wise, Uh stat wise and all that. So eh, I guess it's fine. Um, The one that, kind of got me interested though was the Damon X Machina yeah, they reveal. Did. That was way better than what they showed at E3. <laughs> I'm so, excited. If it is basically Xenoblade X without me having to spend 30 hours before getting my mat. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's looking that way. I might I might be interested. <laughs> they might have cut down to 20, you know. Ah, well, we, no, we screw know. that. <laughs> 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 no yeah it, it, it does look fun yeah i mean i i understand uh isabel she looked like she was going to be an echo at first and then it was like wait she's got a bit of a different move set and then the website itself is like nope she is player number 68 she is not an echo it's like it's okay, okay. i don't know it just feels weird because we're in the age of echoes and we're still getting clones yeah that, that that's a fair assessment she's she is a clone um, she has a few moves that are directly taken from Villager and a few moves that are modified, but 
Mm-hmm. She's she's as much a clone as like Falco is or Luigi or Ganondorf, but yeah. Oh well, yeah. I thought we had com- we had gone away from that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of my favorite comments though was like eh, Sakurai is like yeah Zelda. Uh, Breath of the Wild Zelda, she's more of a researcher. She's not much of a fighter. And then we get Isabel, who like doesn't really have a violent bone in her body and is now in Smash. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that we have the A Link Between Worlds Zelda. That's an excellent addition. But it's just kind of funny how they well, take into account some characters' backstory, but not all of them for why they're in Smash. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. no, I, I, I think it's because Breath of the Wild Zelda is just too big. Her, her butt's too big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I think Isabel is is one of those choices where it, it was more so f- for the fact that Animal Crossing fans, for the most part, not everyone, but a lot of Animal Crossing fans are really in love with her, and not uh-huh. so much she had move set potential. Um, and we, I mean, I I won't know for sure like what I think about her fighter wise until you know I'm actually playing her. But uh, you know, I think there is that appeal for certain type of, of a fan, you know, a lot of, a lot of female gamers really like this choice. They think she's adorable and, you know, even, even, even male gamers think that as well. And yeah, so I've seen plenty of support for her online and well, a bunch of different channels. Like that's fine. Like yeah. I'm not opposed to Isabel being in the game. <clears throat> no, I, I'm I get not you. a huge fan of is that she's a semi clone. Yeah. Or she could have just been a cl- an, an echo and a lot of people say, well, because she requires less work, she's more of just extra. She's not really taking the place of another fighter, but she's more work than an echo. So is she taking the place of two echoes instead? Like, couldn't we have had her as an echo and I don't know, Impa as (laughs) also an echo. Whereas now all we get is Isabel as a semi clone. We won't know until like the full game is out, but. Right, and we won't even really know until like even all the DLC characters are released if if they're going that route. So yeah. Well, I imagine the DLC characters with Smash Four, they didn't even start working on DLC until after the game was that finalized yeah, and put out. And I imagine they do the same thing with this game. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I hope so. Yeah. But besides that, do you have any other comments on the Nintendo Direct? I mean. Um, just curious. I'm surprised that we still don't have Pikmin 4. I, Animal Crossing is coming out a lot, a lot sooner than I was expecting. I was expecting like 2020, 2021. Yeah, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know what it was, but I, I really was expecting the Animal Crossing to be announced this year. Um, even, even more so than Pikmin 4. I don't know why, but I just had this, had this feeling, and lo and behold, there it is. Well, it's made by the same development team as Splatoon, and it's not like they haven't had their hands bit or. They, they've been pretty busy the last couple of years. No, it's, it's true. Yeah, maybe they. So I'm hoping they worked it out. That that doesn't mean we get a rushed Animal Crossing. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I I hope not. That'd be yeah, definitely bad. <laughs> but then again, Animal Crossing New Leaf came out in 2012, which is six years ago, and they haven't really. I, I I mean, I don't know for sure, but I feel like they've had a lot of time to work on this game, like. In the interim, between all of their big projects, maybe between they have Splatoon one slated and for Splatoon two and the DLC yeah. for Octo expansion. Right. I mean, they, it's not like they've been sitting on their butts for the last six years. No, no, no. And I'm, I, yeah. But I mean, like, who knows if they actually had one semi in development for the Wii U, and then they abandoned ship and just moved it over to the Switch, with Splatoon taking up the majority of their time. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, we don't know anything about the development. It's all just speculation anyway. Right. But um, at E3, I believe Reggie said that he does. they don't want to tease things that are further yeah. out in development than six months. And we didn't get, like, an early 2019. So are, are they sticking true with that with Animal Crossing? Did they reveal it a little too early, just a pad? Yeah. Out the direct a bit more? When... Yeah, when I just said that, I was like, okay, maybe I see what you're saying because, you know, the same thing happened with Smash. But then you look at Metroid and it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, that's kind of a different situation though, because Metroid crawled its way out of the grave with that. No, you're you're right. But, and and that was the excuse at the time that I, that, you know, that I, yeah, I was thinking that too. But then when, but now we have Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing, which are announced for 2019. Now they could be coming in in the next six months of 
you know, maybe sometime in spring of 2017, uh, 2019. But, I, but I, I don't know. We don't have a day for that. And the fact that we just have a logo for Animal Crossing makes me think we won't see that till like fall 2019. E3. Or yeah, E3. I think, I don't even think they're going to reveal it until E3. Yeah. That, I mean, that may be the case. It's, I'm worried that we're going to be in drought until July of next year. You really think so? Yeah, I think we're going to get Smash. We're going to get Fire Emblem. We also have Yoshi. That's, Yoshi's first Yoshi spring. Will come. And Yoshi, but that's three games out of like almost a year. Although <laughs> I would I wouldn't be surprised if Fire Emblem was pushed back again. We really? didn't. We, well, we didn't see a twi- trailer. We haven't heard anything since. We saw a trailer. Didn't no, we? Uh, well, uh, not not this direct. Not, not since E three. Not since E three. Oh, especially since they're slating it for like um, late spring, winter, early that's, spring. Yeah. So, so I. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little worried, but who knows? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. even like a sizzle reel or reminder. <laughs> Fire Emblem's still coming. Like we just haven't seen anything since E three, and they've had yeah. the opportunities to show so, us. So. Following Reggie's statement, then it might mean that it's more than six months out. Yeah, Maybe. I. Uh. I mean, I, 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 I hope I want Nintendo to have that mindset. I mean, I'm glad we know these games are coming, but I, I would like for them to have the mindset of not making their fans wait crazy amount of times. But at the same time, I don't want a crappy game. So, you know, a poorly made game. So I, I, I don't know. There's. There's a balance to be had there, but I, mm-hmm. I see what well, he's saying. The further we go along, the more my original theory seems to be correct that basically the first year of the Switch lineup was a combination of a couple past years of Wii U combined with what they planned for the first year of Switch. Yeah. And then 2018 mm-hmm. is kind of suffering because of that. And I don't think things are going to start up again until summer of next year and then things are going to get really cooking <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> now that they know for sure that the switch is a success and they've got money pouring in they can invest in all of these big games that i mean at that want. point i mean whenever fire emblem drops whether it is early next year or later next year I, i'm pretty sure that's coming out next year then you've got pokemon gen 8 you've got metroid prime 3 bayonetta mm. luigi's mansion 3 Damon X Machina, um, Animal Crossing, like that. The majority and Yoshi, and the majority of those are all going to likely be in the later half of next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I could definitely see that. So next E3, I think is going to be a really busy E3. It might be the first E3 in a while where Nintendo doesn't just focus on one game. They might actually finally change up their structure again. That would be nice. <laughs> Even if they don't go back to the conferences, having like a booth that's themed around multiple things would just be a nice change of pace. So, well, cool. Um, that, I guess that's uh, all we have to say on the direct for now. Um, if you haven't listened, go listen to episode 109 where uh, Skylar, James, and I talk all about the direct in its entirety. Um, but for now, we're going to move on to some of the NES online stuff. Since I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, uh, the NES online launched last night and we and the rest of the world have had access to it for about, uh, I don't know, 20 something hours, (laughs) um, give or take. Um, so the first thing to talk about is the NES online app. I don't remember its official name. Do you know its official name? uh, It's, it's before we jump into that. I want to ask, do either of you have Nintendo Online yet? Yes. Yes? I, I had just about downloaded the trial, but I've been so busy today that okay. I haven't so gotten I, to it. So I'm the only one. So, so David and I haven't tried it yet, but yes. David read will all be about getting it, it soon. Yes. I don't think I'm getting it until Smash Bros. comes out. That's fine. That's totally so, fine. <laughs> just just for context of this conversation, mm-hmm. I just wanted to see where everyone yeah. was at. Okay. No, yeah. yeah. No, I've, I've tried it out. Um... I've tried Mario Kart and I've tried the NES online app. Um, or I think it's it's Nintendo, Interta- Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> it's the, a long name. It's a long name. Uh, yeah. So there you go. So, yeah, um, the first thing to note is its interface. Um, It looks really nice. It looks a lot better than the um, NES Classic uh, does. 
Um, it's basically just a collection of the box art. It's kind of laid out in a tile pattern, which looks really, you know, interesting and inviting to uh, select these games. Sure, there are only 20 of them right now, but um, the interface is nice. It loads games super quickly. Um, it's got options for uh, local multiplayer for all the game, most of the games, I guess, if it supports uh, multiplayer and online multiplayer for the same fashion. Um, yeah, you can even get the Famicom collection if you have a Japanese Nintendo Switch account hooked up to your Switch. You can download there's it from no there. It's, no. the, it's the same games, although, I mean, there is a difference in like quality because the Famicom was a little had a little more power under its hood. Uh-huh. But um, and if you really care, the number, like the same number of games. some of the yeah, it, but some of the music, you know, has extra channels. So the really good version of the Legend of Zelda music is available on the Famicom. If that's like your your cup of tea, you can go go do that if you want. Um, the apparently the emulation quality is pretty nice, nice and snappy. I think people are saying it's on par, if not slightly better than the NES Classic. But a lot of people are saying it's definitely better than the Wii U, especially loading into the interface and all that stuff right off the bat. Um, yeah. Have, so you, you said you played a couple of the games, James. How, how are you liking it? Yeah, it feels great when I'm playing by myself. Just, you know, um, I, don't, I mean, I guess technically I'm online, but I'm, I'm just I'm not playing with anybody. It's just me. It feels smooth. It, it, it feels seamless. Uh, a lot better than the NES Classic. I mean, I like the NES Classic, you know, with the music and and the feel behind it, and it has it has a good selection of games. But it did feel a little clunky um, and not the the best looking. Um, but this but this system this this app it it fits the simplistic min- minimalist nature of the Switch UI, and it mm-hmm. just it's great. It it it's smooth, seamless, and I really like it. Um, the games play well. I haven't had any issues by, by myself. Now I did get to play with Skylar a bit, um, today and, uh, you know, I was, wanted, I wanted to see how it did online and both of our connections aren't the best, I'm going to be honest. Um, I think especially Skylar's considering he's kind of in a, a, <laughs> a dorm or, you know, apartment. It's not really, or a, a college apartment. Not really the best. But internet. they're supposed to have Google Fiber. <laughs> no, most of the apartment complexes down here in Provo, like, are like you can have access to Google Fiber, but we're not paying for it, and they get like some crappy service they've been with for the last like twenty plus years. Yeah. What? I know. Yeah. Right. There was there was a huge deal that they were getting free know, Google Fiber there. I know. All right. All right. They're just. I mean, you can get just... the free one that's like seven or ten megabits upload and download but well, what does it cost for like the actual fiber so if you want the gigabit it's uh 70 a month that's not bad it's not bad for internet no it's not but if you don't have four people that are willing to pay it it's like i don't really want to take the whole cost of that on my own when <laughs> it's only one box per apartment so yeah and anyway. if you don't have it like if you're you know if you're undergrad and you're barely making ends meet as it is it's kind of hard to forked it just to 70 bucks um, all right all right what i think i might go get the free box anyway <laughs> so i can have a port open on my server but that's a totally different conversation <laughs> anyway but uh, so anyway. so we we didn't have the best connection uh but we were still able to play the games and we didn't we felt there was no lag in that sense there was some like choppiness um and it they said there would be like some connection issues but we we still had a good time, and we I never felt like the the, the online hindered uh, my gameplay. Granted, this is an NES game, so there's not a whole <laughs> lot to hinder. You know, I mean, it's not like there's a lot going right. on here. Um, but I, I think it's a step in the right direction, and at least that works out. Um, uh-huh. Now, I, I I think ha- the the app itself. It feels like Nintendo's going to make other apps of their other systems, like a SNES app or an N64 app. It just it just works so well that way. And maybe that's why they're only doing the NES app first, so they can get it all figured out and see how it works. And it is easier to do than some of those other games. So, you know, make that all pretty and nice. And then once they have a handle on that, then they move on to the next one. My question is, is why is it taking so long? How many interns do they have working on this? 
I don't know. Two? I just just wait until I talk <laughs> about some of the statistics that data miners have already found about the game. I'll get to that in a minute. Just, just <laughs> wait. It's great. Anyway, keep, keep, keep going, James, if well, you've got anything else. I, I don't know. I don't know if I... Uh, do I have anything else? I mean, like well, I said... I mean, the Famicom version is not going to have anything new right now, um, but maybe but it will. I don't know. Maybe down the line they'll add more game, like because there are Japanese exclusive NES games. So right. maybe they will like have Mario some. Bros. Two. But why wouldn't they just? Oh man, that that makes things really complicated because with the eShop and like we see with past systems, uh-huh. each region had their own re- release schedule, right? Even though yeah. America would still get. Uh, some Japanese exclusives, but they would cost extra. Like Sin and Punishment cost twelve dollars, I believe. <laughs> it, it, even though the rest of the N sixty four games are like eight. Mm-hmm. So, huh? So anyone can just jump on and have a Japanese account this time now. And yeah, just, but the games right. are in Japanese, right? You wouldn't be able to play them in English. Yes, they are, they are in Japanese, and the entire interface is in Japanese as well. Yeah. Hmm. So, so I guess if you really want to play Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you basically know the story, Marth's story, right? So not a big deal. <laughs> you just have I mean, to memorize it's not like which there's a story attack, to the game, anyway. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just have to memorize which uh menu item is like attack and which one's like defend or all that fun stuff. So Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do agree with you, James. I think that this is like the framework for other consoles to join the service. Um, I didn't realize that it was going to be its own separate app until last night when I saw people downloading right. it. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be like another icon on your screen where you just go and find a whole list of games. Um, but since it's its own app and it basically downloads all of the games for you, it, it's probably really easy to do with the SNES and such. Yeah. So I'm just, I don't, I just don't understand why they didn't throw up, every single nes game that they have licenses for right now yeah i don't know why yeah i don't know why the slow trickle maybe they're worried of it will slow down things like i don't know it would be way more enticing to buy it for some of the people that are on the edge if they had access to almost every single nes game like if they have to do the slow roll because they have to like figure out online play for every one of these games then just have it so certain games have online features and then slow roll that out but why can't I play Metroid yet? <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. What, what does that have to do with online? Like, <laughs> that's a good me. question. Um, and that that leads right into like <laughs> um, what's been going on in the data mining and hacking community. So it's already been hacked, like hardcore, one hundred percent hacked. People can FTP into the app itself, look at all the game files, read the text and all that fun stuff. Uh, They found that the app interface itself is very similar to the NES Mini's architecture. Uh, Well, not architecture, that that refers to the hardware, more like the infrastructure of the um, software itself is very similar to how the NES Mini loads apps and games and such. Um, the best part about this is games are literally .nes files <laughs> that you could find on websites um, to to just find the uh, the ROMs and such. Like, um, it makes a lot of sense that they do that because you know they're they're just .nes files and that's how the uh, NES Mini and SNES Mini worked. But what's even more interesting is that the games that have the online. Um, the online functionality aren't patched at all. They are literally just the pure ROMs of the original games. What Uh, the heck? Yeah, people have pulled them down and popped them into their emulators, and it runs exactly the same. What? It it is literally the same game. Um, (laughs) What they have noticed is that the app has a bunch of protocols that, like, tie things in together, and it's hypothesized that the app itself... Um, the player one console basically loads up the ROM and hosts it while the other player that's coming in to do the multiplayer and stuff is like interfacing with that um, emulator. So kind of interesting how they got that all to work. Um, It apparently uses the exact same protocols as the rest of the Nintendo online service, meaning the Splatoon 2 um, interfaces or the Splatoon 2 protocols and the Mario Kart protocols. It's all almost completely identical from what they can see. 
Um, what's also interesting wow. is that they can add games incredibly easy, easily. They just throw them all in the folder with their respective box arts and title information. And then they edit a plain text file that is the <laughs> database of the allowed games that this the app can run. <laughs> Next, we're going to find out that Nintendo's password is password. <laughs> <laughs> so That's pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure, they weren't expecting people necessarily expecting, I guess, people to just break into the app and find all this stuff just sitting there. I don't think it was that they didn't expect it. I think they just didn't care. Yeah, probably. You can't tell me any software engineer didn't see that coming. (laughs) Yeah, that's 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 what I was saying. But, you know, Nintendo, you know how you get away around this piracy? You release all the freaking games on the app at the start. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because the only way you can get the app is by having Nintendo online, right? And the right. system just deletes the app after a certain amount of days. So if it already had all the games, it literally wouldn't matter. There would be no piracy because you either have the app or you don't. And it would have all the games. Right. Yeah, I mean, with the, with Nintendo being so against piracy, you know, they, they, you know, huh. they have the right to, for that. It's just... For being so against piracy, why you make it so easy to hack? I don't understand. Well, now we found out why they took down all those ROM sites. It's because they knew it was easy to hack and they didn't want people throwing them on there immediately (laughs) after. (laughs) Yeah, I know, Uh, right? (laughs) Because they're literally using the .NES files that those websites have. (laughs) Ah, Nintendo, why? Uh, I mean, the good thing about this is it's like emulating the games in HD, I guess. Um, So that's a a plus. I might. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that on the podcast. (laughs) Ignore that. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Yeah. So anyway, um, with how simple it is to like add these games and such, it is incredibly like maybe, maybe not infuriating, but it's little concerning i think that they haven't released that many games on it and that they're holding back so much from us when it is supposedly incredibly easy to just drop in the nes files into the app change the database and then boom you've got the games like i don't know if it's concerning. it feels almost like nintendo wanted nintendo online to fail <laughs> i don't I, yeah, maybe i don't know anyway i don't, it's, I don't know if it's concerning but it's just it, confusing like they had yeah. <laughs> a year and a half to figure this out i yeah i don't i don't know beats me what were they they're really they confident in down? their online games what i guess <laughs> doing at their offices <laughs> making wow good games. they need to, they need to hire a few more people to get onto this the streaming yeah. app but yeah whatever um but it's very apparent that they spent most of their time working on the ui itself like the very minimalistic UI. Yeah, it, it's nice. It it looks good. It loads fast. It works well. It's it's pleasing to look at, I guess. But sure. yeah, that that's where all their time went on this. So especially since it's literally just the same st- structure as the NES Mini. Uh huh. Wow. Um. Well, okay. This was obviously just tacked on at last second. <laughs> good job, Nintendo. Yeah. You finally made. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> I just um, wish it had a bit more to it. I wish it was the at least the size of my own NES library. Yeah. Not not a third the size, but whatever. So, anyway, um, Nintendo's promised that they'll they'll be adding more games to the NES online, and it's obviously very easy to do. Yeah. So. Well, we should oh, expect. No, no, it's not that easy. It takes a lot of work to dump a single file into a folder. It takes like you can only do like one file a week, effectively, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then you gotta, you know, uh, push the update to every single switch. And you know, every switch updates only one at a time. Oh, I know, right? It's not like we have that automated or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, let's move on to another topic in the online service. Um, James mentioned that the online service also, of course, comes with online play. Apparently it works like it should. 
Um, I don't think people have been noticing differences compared to the free version that we had for a year and a half. I mean, I don't know. What are are your thoughts? Not really. Which I mean, kind of disappointing, but I don't know what I was what I was supposed to expect. But I think I didn't have any drops, but I've heard of people who had drops. But they said, yeah, I normally had drops anyway, so whatever. Um, I don't know. It would have been nice to have some sort of improvement, but perhaps those drops are just the people themselves. Like they have internet issues or something like that. I, I don't know. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it, it works. It appears that Splatoon 2 is still peer-to-peer instead of connecting to a dedicated server. Well, they so. haven't even figured out their UI yet for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Splatoon 2, fun game. It's definitely based around the 90s, including their internet service. <laughs> <laughs> Dial up yep. and everything. Yep. Um, another thing that we didn't realize would be coming with the Switch Online because Nintendo was very cryptic with a lot of the information about it was digital game sharing, which is actually a really cool and nice feature for Nintendo to do. Basically, if you purchase games on the Nintendo uh, eShop and you sign in on a different Switch as a non-primary account is what they're calling it. So like, you know, a second or third or fourth or all the way up to however many the Switch can handle. If you sign in on a different Switch, you can access the eShop with that account and download the game, uh, the games that you uh, purchased on the eShop and then play them on that Switch using that profile. So families that have multiple switches um, can use this to their advantage for smaller games, I suppose. Um, not necessarily games like Mario Kart, where you all can play together, because when it's on another switch, it has to check in online to make sure that the other person that actually owns the game isn't already online and playing the game. So kind of kind of an interesting way to do that it's a lot like the steam family sharing thing whatever that was called so i mean kind of yeah the offline thing right or uh, maybe there is with steam you can put your account into offline mode and so yeah well there um, is a a way to the second switch that doesn't have the primary account it has to stay online however the primary switch can go offline and play the same game as okay. the, as the other game, it just as soon as the primary switch goes online, it will kick out the secondary switch. All right, because so I was going to say with Steam, we've been able to get multiple games running on the same account with offline mode. Mm. Uh-huh. But well, that's neat. That's pretty sweet. I need to buy more games on the eShop. Then sounds like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I can sign in on my brother's account. He can actually play games like Hollow Knight or uh, Steam oh, World Dig or yeah. whatever. So Mm. that way he doesn't have to pay for it every time. And I can play Undertale since he's apparently going to buy it. (laughs) Cool. So, you know, that would be really nice for us with reviewing games. Actually, yeah, it would be. Play. Yeah. Huh. In the future. That's a thought for the future. We'll we'll discuss that privately, I guess. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, yeah, game sharing. It works. It's pretty cool. Um, And something that Nintendo didn't tell us about. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, why wouldn't they market that? I don't I don't get it. That seems like something big to market. It's really nice for families and, you know, friends and such. So, oh, well, hmm. whatever. It's here now. <laughs> um, and then, of course, there's cloud saves. Um, having the ability to upload your uh, save data to the cloud is an excellent feature. Um, we probably should have had it sooner. <laughs> But uh, uh, if your Switch gets smashed by a thwomp, your saves are okay, except for Splatoon and one other game. I can't remember which one. But oh, uh, I don't Pokemon, think I've let's go. Ever ha- That's I don't right. think I've ever had an instance where this has mattered. Right? Everyone's just like I having a crybaby. Cry ba- They're crying about this and how it's like terrible. And yeah, and granted, it's probably not. It's not as good as other things. But I mean, it's just like buying insurance. You don't do that. So why do you need this? Because it's t- f- maybe a little bit free. Like, I I don't know. But apparently as soon as your account is, or your online service is over, say that cloud save data will probably disappear. So fair warning. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> is, that, 
Stop being incompetent. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's amazing. Does Nintendo just not look at the competition at all and see what they're doing? Like, I don't know. They, do they just put blinders on themselves <laughs> and just. Well, they had, they had to have heard a cloud do. save somehow. <laughs> no, no. Was, their, their CEO thought of it. He's, he's completely invented cloud saves. <laughs> uh, yeah. So beyond that, I think that covers pretty much everything that the Nintendo Online service has to offer. I had one, more, about, I had one more question about cloud saves. Oh, sorry. Do you know yes. how, does it happen automatically? Like after you've, you know, paid for the service and everything? Or do you have I don't to know. do you have to go manually somewhere? Because I, I I mean I just I didn't see it or figure it out. So is it saving my data now? That's a good question. The cloud. Some people are saying that it offers peace of mind, but it's not quite there yet. It's not very good. Yeah, it looks like there's a second um, place that you go to. Huh. Or it. I don't know. Nintendo's official website literally just has a giant banner that says save data cloud backup. And it's like a picture of someone holding their switch with um, a backup progress. Maybe maybe it's just a list, but it also says automatic backup game data will automatically save to the cloud when you have an Internet connection. No complicated settings or updates required. OK, then. so I, it must just be doing it. All I right. don't know. I maybe it told me somewhere, but I must it must have glazed through it because and hear anything. Well, apparently I'm safe through the cloud right now. So there you go. What's awesome though is that this banner has dates that haven't happened yet. It's like this save data was made on October 6th, 2018. <laughs> okay. I don't believe that. Anyway, the, so that's the Nintendo Switch Online service cloud saves, game sharing, uh, player to player gaming, and the Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Switch Online app. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's kind of bad. <laughs> like the whole, the package yeah. as a whole is just not that great. Um, and I, I, I know it's less than what you're paying with Sony and Xbox, but uh, Sony and Xbox or Sony and Microsoft have offered more with their plans. Um, and just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's not or doesn't mean it's okay, you know? I mean... Yeah, and it doesn't mean that it's, like, um, free from criticism either, like... Right. I, I think people should realize that, yes, it should be criticized. There are some things it does... I think it does well. Uh, like I said, the NES Online, I, I think they have something going there. Granted, we've already established that it's very easy to hack and <laughs> kind of lazy. But um, I, 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 do, I do think th it, that's a bright spot, and... Maybe that's what they'll do for virtual console going forward. But other than that, and, and maybe cloud saves, you know, depending on the person, it's not that great of a of a system, a service. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, ho I hope these award these uh, rewards that they're teasing are uh, pretty dang good because I don't know. It's just looking like uh, they just wanted me to pay for their internet service. I mean, that's all it is, but still. Right. And it's not like the internet quality has gone up at all. Right. Like, what was what was even the purpose of this year and a half, effectively, free trial <laughs> if they didn't update really anything in that last past year? Right. I mean, we, Did we they even put in any infrastructure for, like, dedicated servers on these games? Like... <laughs> they want Splatoon 2 to be super competitive and awesome and whatever, but without those like dedicated servers, it just it doesn't feel like it can ever be on any sort of like competing level with other games. I don't know. It, it's just uh, I don't know about that, but I, I will say that um, they they just don't know how to do Internet <laughs> like they they never have. They so. never have. <laughs> I but it know. was always fine because it was free. Right. right. And I don't like paying for online. I think I've made this clear <laughs> in past episodes. Yeah. I still have yet to ever pay for Xbox Live or PSN. I've gotten free trials and all that, but that's it. Not even for Monster Hunter. I didn't even do it for Monster Hunter. I might get Nintendo online eventually just because of the family plan and I can munchkin it with a bunch of friends. So it's only like five bucks for a year. But uh -huh. yeah. Ugh. I mean, but that's a good way it, to go. As it stands, it's almost like not worth it. So, I well, don't so know. what Nintendo did 
was they basically just threw up a paywall just randomly through the year. Like, oh, now we want our internet to cost money. Everyone now has access to an NES mini. (laughs) And that's it. That's all they did. (laughs) You see, they did look at other, they did look at Sony and Microsoft because they're like, hey, they're getting free money. (laughs) <laughs> yeah great that's not no <laughs> they didn't even fix like major issues such as voice chat or yeah dedicated servers stuff that people were complaining about during the free trial period and so what, what was even the point of the free trial it was just pr right that's Maybe. all it boils down to nintendo just didn't put any effort into it like they did with the you the ui with the switch or the eShop with the switch like, what is Nintendo doing? It's like they released the Switch and then downsized their company immediately, then realized that there was a big su- success, and now they're tr- playing catch up on their own system or something. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. I, I will say that I feel like Nintendo overall, especially with UI, has been going for less flair and you know vibes or hmm, sorry, less f- flashiness and and flair and more uh, speed. Like they want load time is to be faster they want um the game to the to look nicer you know nicer and cleaner and if you look at the wii u i mean booting that thing up can take a take a while i mean loading any of the apps is can be painful well, sure but that's because the wii u is the extreme opposite problem with the meverse stuff yeah no you're right and yeah and i mean loading two screens not to say that the, yeah not to say the switch doesn't have it doesn't have issues it does but i but i think maybe nintendo is going for more, just a simpler faster look i mean you can click on some of those apps and they just like that just yeah but just you, you can still have that and have folders at least yeah no that's the thing yeah no you're right they there are there needs to be improvements like folders and maybe themes um i mean I, would it kill them to add music would maybe maybe it would <laughs> maybe it would slow it down i don't know uh only if the i'm only okay with music if i can turn it off I, I think I do like the no music thing because fair enough. Man, fair enough. That we music. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the me music was great. <laughs> oh, that was inside an app. No, like the home menu oh, it was yeah. that weird, like <laughs> draining sound. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> I get you. You're like suspended in a void or something with just <laughs> weird noises just coming around from all angles. And like whenever you'd go back to the main menu, it made like a whole bunch of random sounds all at once. And then it was like that weird thing again, like you'd been teleported. Yeah, no, I, I agree. The it would main always UI, start out really loud, too, as soon as you booted up the main menu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to have the option for music. But yeah, if they add it, it has to be turn offable. For sure. Or not terrible like the Wii. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, um, I hope that we're getting more stuff with Nintendo Switch Online and that it does get better. Like maybe the Smash Brothers games will use dedicated servers and have a way better service. Well, what um, I'm afraid of, <laughs> we're not getting anything new this year. I think we've seen everything we're getting in 2018. NES games and everything. Um, I'm afraid that they are going to release the smash demo, but it will be online only. So you have to have an account to play the demo. Interesting. (laughs) And that, that's going to be one way. I mean, I'll get as as bad as it is. I would get, get Nintendo (laughs) online just for the demo. I bought a whole 3ds game just to have a demo for smash bros. Like, yeah, yeah, Smash Bros. 3DS is just a demo, but <laughs> uh-huh. there's gonna be a lot of people upset about that. There's like this, like, well, not a lot, like this minority, this loud minority who's like, the 3DS is better than the Smash Wii U, and they you know, they could think that, but I feel like you're a little too passionate about that sometimes, people. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll have to see what Nintendo does in the future, but yeah, as it stands, I'm not too thrilled about this. I mean, it's. I was it's hoping very, for more. It's very meh. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I like I said, the bright a bright spot is the NES Online, but aside yeah. from that, it's just. 
I thought the one image from Splatoon of like someone saying on their message system, "Buy poor people was pretty funny. (laughs) (laughs) I think I saw that. (laughs) Bye. Goodbye. Well, don't let the door jump the way out. (laughs) One other interesting uh, thing is that Fortnite doesn't even need Nintendo Online to play. Nope, it doesn't. So it's an entirely optional service for developers to get on onto. Don't they have voice chat through the Switch as well? Or yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah, they're just <laughs> what they've been able to figure out how to get the Switch work better than Nintendo. <laughs> I just think Nintendo stubborn is like, no, we're gonna do it our way and it's gonna be great. Well, that's clearly not the case, Nintendo. <laughs> Fortnite's like, watch us. Here we go. <laughs> Look I at believe this. the major argument has always been that the Switch doesn't have a whole lot of RAM for voice chat. But apparently that didn't matter for Fortnite. So I guess it depends on how memory intensive your game is going to be. Uh, good point. Mm, that's a and fair I think point. Nintendo just wanted to standardize it as, no, we're just going to use the app for everything. That way people don't get upset when certain games can't do it. Probably goes back and to speed. And then Fortnite was big enough that they were able to just uh, get around Nintendo's walls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Fortnite can do it. Nintendo can too. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Fortnite, there's apparently a Fortnite bundle for a Switch. You know, yeah, so you I can saw get a free, that. free copy of Fortnite. <laughs> a free copy of Fortnite? Wow, what a steal. Well, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, apparently you get coins, uh, in-game currency, so I don't know. But still. It better be a better deal than just buying that in-game currency in-game, but all right, sure. I don't know. I don't play Fortnite, so. Neither do I. Yeah. Whatever. I watch it sometimes, like when it's a really competent player, and I'm just like, you look like you're having fun, but I don't care enough to pick this game up. No. So. <laughs> Never. Not even once. Not even once. Well, we should probably wrap up our discussion on the Nintendo Online stuff and uh, move into what we've been playing this week. Um, I'll go first. I've been playing more Hollow Knight. Um, finished the main story, I think, last week. I don't remember when I did, Um, but I've been going through a lot of the DLC stuff and cleaning up a bunch of the areas. Um, I'm only really using a guide at this point to trigger the DLC because I really wanted to get a head start on the Grim Troop stuff. And I did not want to explore the whole game just to find where the one hidden room is (laughs) to activate it. Yeah, they kind of hid the Grim Troop stuff a bit tougher than they should have (laughs) it's just behind this random wall inside a cave they've already broken a wall for so it's a secret wall behind a secret wall right and so i was like yeah i'm looking that one up (laughs) especially because the notch that you get for the grim troop is actually like pretty useful once you get going on it like lets you have a little guy follow you behind like can attack enemies for you that that's fairly useful um but i've been how how far how far have you gotten into the grim troop dlc so i finished the first phase so i found three of the flames i guess i found four if you count the next phase i found one of them um yeah it's not very far okay <laughs> i know there are multiple phases to it and i know that grim ends up being a boss yeah which... i was gonna say um <laughs> you, you should do the meme build for for fighting grim what's that it, one at least at least after you've beaten him once or something basically you have um the badge that spawns the little like spider people. Okay, yeah. So you have you have spider spawning. You have the one that spawns the fireflies. You have the dung defender smoke thing. Basically, <laughs> all your badges are stuff that do damage for you, and all you have to do is dodge. <laughs> that sounds useful. <laughs> I might just do that. It's um, pretty dumb. Yeah, I've been I've also been clearing a bunch of the dream bosses. Um, I beat last night um, the soul guy. I can't remember his name, Um, but he's up in the soul tower. I beat his dream boss last night. He's so fast. Holy cow. (laughs) It took me like it took me like 15 tries. Like, you know where you get desolate or not desolate dive. the, The one that lets you ground pound. Oh, that boss. Yeah. Yeah, he was tough. <laughs> yeah. So every time. So after you've beaten them, you can go and beat them again in soul form. 
Oh, yeah. You, yeah. You can keep doing that multiple times. And every time you fight them sequentially after that, they get stronger. Oh, my God. Right. I, I noticed that with uh, with Zote the Mighty or yeah. whatever his uh, his uh, dream form is. Yeah, he gets harder. He does like one more damage after like four tries. And then he ends up doing like four total damage by like the 10th try you fight him. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> um, well, not only that, but he gets a new descriptor every single time you fight him. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah, so pay attention to that because they just add another one to it until it goes off the screen. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love Hollow Knight so much. Like for $15, you get so much out of this game and the bosses are tough and I love that. Um, it's a really fun Metroidvania style game. Um, I really like that you don't have a gun in this game, really. You get spells and you get to use the... The nail to attack. That's like a nice way to change things up since most uh, Metroidvania games I've played have been with a gun. Uh, it's just, it's great. I love this game so much. Um, I want 100% it. I really do. So I'm, I'm just slowly doing that. It. Yeah, 107% because <laughs> of all the DLC. So um, I still haven't done that because I, I'm not using a guide. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. Every time I like reboot it, I just start a new game. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. James, you, you should consider getting it for real for only $15. But I, I know you've got tons of other things to play and do. So Yeah, I mean, I, I'm considering prices. I don't know. Price doesn't matter to me. As long as it's a good game, uh -huh. I'll, I'll pay it. But uh, I'm not sure how we do like our rules. But if, as far as I understand, this sounds like this is going to be our game of the year. <laughs> like, unless Well, yeah. So the rules for our game of the year is that it's their first... Uh, release on a Nintendo system, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So yeah, Hollow Knight's definitely a contender for Game of the Year. This I mean, year. we might as well just oh, call yeah. it now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> even, even I mean, it's competition is Smash Bros. And well, that's true. It I is guess going Pokemon Smash Let's Bros. Go and Mario Party. That's true. <laughs> left. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but I am loving this game. The atmosphere is great. The music is so fun. I've pulled up the music on Spotify just to listen to as I'm going to yes. school. It's so good. Yeah. I listen uh, to it on loop for when I'm studying. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, on top of that, I've been playing some Pokemon Go, um, of course. <laughs> it's kind of my day to day thing as I'm walking to classes and such. It's been a lot of fun lately. Um, the last week and through the end of the month is like a big Kanto event where like every Kanto Pokemon is spawning like crazy, except for Cloyster and Shelter. Uh, I can't find any of them anyway. Gotta be in the um, ocean. I'm just yeah, I got I gotta go to the ocean. Yeah, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> right in the middle of the desert. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but at least I finally have enough oddishes to get Vileplume and Bilossum and um Poly uh Polyrath and Politoed. So I'm finally filling out my uh, Kanto Pokedex. And this week's been also really fun with the raid fights. Um they had the three legendary birds from Gen 1 join the raids. Um, so you can get those really easily. I did a couple of those today and a couple yesterday and it's just, they're so fun. <laughs> and now I have some really good Articunos, Moltres and Zapdoses. So it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, and they announced today that Deoxys is joining EX raids, which is really cool. Um, it's just going to be his normal form to start out with, but the game code itself supports his speed attack and defense forms. So those will eventually come. Maybe. It's a it's a lot of it's a good time to be a Pokemon Go fan now, but I uh, totally understand if you don't want to get back into it. <laughs> cool, because um, I feel like some anyway. people like some Pokemon fans. There's they've become like this gatekeepers kind of thing. Not not yeah. saying you, but there's just been this growing thing where, oh, you don't play Pokemon Go anymore. I don't think you deserve to be a Pokemon fan. Or like, you know, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's kind of on the other side too. Oh, it is. Oh, it totally is. I there there's both. <laughs> I think that just people just take things to extreme. I mean, we we've known this, but it's just it's just mm -hmm. funny to see just oh you play Pokemon Go oh you're such a baby or you're not a real Pokemon fan, yeah, the, <laughs> that kind of thing like, and it's the same it go it goes over to Let's Go as well on both sides wow. like yeah, but right. I've made some good friends because <laughs> of Pokemon Go, that. like the community behind Pokemon Go is what's like keeping me going i'm on like three different slack uh servers for the wow. game i don't know if i can one for that. like the salt lake area one for the um utah county area where like byu is and then one just for like the byu instinct team 
Wow. So we can like coordinate raids. We can talk about where Pokemon are. And it's just been so fun. I, I've also met the girl that I've been dating because of Pokemon Go. So it's it's nice. <laughs> It it's a lot more fun than it was even like the first few months it came out for sure. So anyway, that's all I, I got just to wish say. it had more meat to it. It does now. It does. Oh. They're adding player to player. They've added trading. Um, the raids are a lot of fun and yeah, are really good ways to get legendaries. Pokemon. Yeah, no, the, the battles are bad. I agree. One hundred percent. The battles are bad. I but. don't know. I'm weird. I don't like the, the raids don't sound appealing to me. Like, I don't want to talk yeah. to you people. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me. I don't want to have to go places. I want to just play Pokemon Go in one spot. <laughs> That's when Pokemon Go was the most fun, when you could just sit at the library with like a thousand people and just sit on your butt for five hours doing nothing. <laughs> Spinning the Pokestops and catching Pokemon with lures everywhere. Yeah. That's uh, great. No, but I, I know uh, I know a lot of people like that community aspect to it, and it, mm-hmm. it, it, it has improved a lot. And Gen 4 is going to come soon, eventually. All of the other easy raids have been Pokemon that evolve in Gen 4. Cool. So they're clearly laying the groundwork for Gen 4. So Psych, we're to jumping play. to Gen 6. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, like kind oh, of oh. jumped to Gen 7 already with the Alolan forms. True. So. True. Hey, clarify anyway. this for me. Hey, hey, the Alolan forms should only be available in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> really, though. Really, though. If we want to be accurate here. They specifically say they're the forms from Hawaii, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, uh, clar- you had a question, clarify James? this for me about Pokemon Let's Go because I keep hearing I keep hearing like uh, mixed facts about this. So you, I know you can transfer your Pokemon in Go to Let's Go. I know mm-hmm. that, including the Alolan Pokemon, but you can't transfer your Pokemon from Let's Go to Go. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. All right. Because like, someone was as, saying like, oh, you can transfer stuff to your Go app, and I I can see stuff, but then someone said Pokemon too, and I would then I, then they kind of got me confused. I imagine that's because it's easier to catch Pokemon in Let's Go than in Pokemon Go, or not catch, but like encounter specific Pokemon. That right, like to fill out your Pokédex and stuff. No, yeah, I. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally see if it. If you could transfer like a whole bunch of Zapdos like that you keep going because you're like starting the game over and over again or whatever, that would kind of break the Go mm-hmm. meta. And it wouldn't be beneficial to Niantic or the Pokemon company yeah. because Zapdos is a raid Pokemon. Like they make money off of those encounters. Right. Because people will pay for the passes to get them. Sure, you get one a day for free and that's how most people play. But there are people that have spent money on the game to get these raid yeah. passes. Yeah. So. Yeah, no. So okay, Pokemon, that kind of yeah. that kind of puts my worries to rest because I I, I think yeah I do think that the idea of bringing Let's Go Pokemon into Go is kind of broken. So yeah, glad that's absolutely. not the case. <laughs> yep. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. James, cool. Tell us about your week. I shall. Uh, <laughs> did, did you have a good week, by the way? Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was it was good. Uh, I, I've really gotten into a groove of things at work. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been playing Okami. I talked about that last week. Um, so I won't say much aside from the fact that the more I play it, the more I really enjoy it. And it, it, it really does feel like um, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, like Zelda game. And I, and I, I really like it. I really appreciate the art style. And surprisingly, the character is something I didn't think would be the case. But they there's a, really a, a, a charming cast of characters here. So anyway... The more I play it, the more I like it. Um, That's good. And then NES Online. Um, been, some of the NES games I played was um, Double Dragon. That was the first time I played that one. A uh, lot of fun beat him up. Very simple, but that was fun. And then River City Panic or... Oh, no, what was it called? River City... Ah, I can't remember the third word, but it's, a, it's a game, an NES game I haven't played before. And there's n- another beat him up and... I was playing that with Skylar. We were having a good time. There's all the random things you can pick up and and River City awesome. Ransom. Ransom. That's the word. River City Ransom. <laughs> like, but so the localization made it so that you 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 were in America, but at the same time, a lot of the buildings and everything are very Japanese, and the parks look Japanese. But they'll say U.S. mail or something like that. <laughs> like, you get you're not fooling me. <laughs> This is Japan. Anyway, um, we played Ice Climbers. Terrible game. Um, 
But it, it, <laughs> I really don't think it's a good game. Like it. I'll fight you. Okay. I'll fight you, you on that one. You can beat me at Ice Climbers and <laughs> prove to me that it's a terrible game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm proving it's a good game. <laughs> no, no, no. I, you know, I guess teach their own. Uh, the jumping in it's just really weird. Anyway, guys, sorry. Moving on. Um, so I, there was a Yoshi game I played. I really liked that one. It's kind of a puzzle s game. Um, Super Mario World 3 is still the best NES game. Such, It, it still holds up today. And then, I've heard it from a few people that has a bit of input lag to it. Does it really? Oh, well, me, Skylar and I were playing it. I played it before, and I didn't notice anything. And then I asked Skylar if he did when we were playing, and he didn't notice anything either. Okay. If Skylar hasn't noticed anything, then I'll just assume it doesn't. Because... <laughs> yeah, because Skylar notices input lag really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Like, you may want to double a- he, he double check with that. him, but uh, that's yeah, that's what he told me. Um, and he he was cruising through the levels like nothing. So now, w- which game was this again? Because I could also try tonight. Uh, Super Mario Three. Super Mario Brothers oh, Three. Mario Three. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. And I feel like there was one more game I tried. Oh well. Um, yeah, so I'm probably, I'll probably try some more cause I, I didn't grow up in the NES, so it's cool to have these games. And I guess that's a bright spot to this, to this app is that it's a, an easier way to access the NES games that you couldn't get on the classic or the, I mean, you know, if you couldn't get your hands on the classic, not that the yeah. classic is hard to get anymore, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's it. I'm looking forward to Torna. I haven't played it yet. I'm going to be getting it on Friday. <laughs> Super excited for that. And then Valkyria Chronicles 4 comes out on Tuesday. So uh, I'm going to be a busy boy. What about you, Jordan? What have you been up to? So I've been playing Enter the Gungeon, which is a roguelike where you play as a guy with a gun shooting bullets and other guns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Inside a dungeon that's shaped like a giant bullet. Oh, my god! It is the most American game out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to type this game out because I feel like I've heard the name before. <laughs> Didn't Donkey do a video great. on it like the other month or two? Did I he? I feel like he he did. Anyway, get, anyway, go ahead and keep talking about so it. So it's a roguelike, sort of like uh, Binding of Isaac. Binding of Isaac is actually really similar to this. Um, randomized rooms. Rooms are square and structured fairly similarly with random enemy drops, random bosses. You try to get through, you die a lot, and then you start over again. And every time you go back in, you collect some money that you can then buy for better random drops to show up in the dungeon or gungeon. And eventually, one day, you might get a good run and beat the game. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Has that day come for you? Uh, No. I made it to the fourth floor. There's five floors. And it was absolutely insane. It (laughs) definitely was a bullet hell. (laughs) Well, living up to That's its awesome. uh, genre, I suppose. Yeah, so it's a bullet hell roguelike wow. dungeon explorer. It's great. It's everything I ever want out of a video game. So what's your favorite cool. game? Very frustrating. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, keep going. Sorry. But they apparently have... So you can build elevators so that you can skip floors. But it takes a lot of resources to make those elevators... And I don't even know if that's the optimal way to beat the game because if you skip floors and you're skipping at random drops and if you're skipping random drops, then good luck fighting the later floors. <laughs> so I'm kind of at, I, I'm not sure yet. I've built the, I'm almost done building the elevator to the second floor. Huh. Okay. We'll see if I use it or not. Do the, do the <laughs> random drops not like, you know, they're like the crappy, they're crappy and like the first two floors or whatever, but then they get better afterwards or are they, are the random drops still? Yeah. Good? So there's tiers of chests, brown, then I think it's blue, green, red, black. Uh-huh. I, I could be wrong with that order, but the better the chest, the better chance it has for being a good item drop. And the further down the floors you go, the better chance your chests will be higher. But, like, I've gotten black chests on floor one. It's not impossible. Oh, okay. You just have to be kind of lucky. Mm. Interesting. Well, there you go. I've been looking at, like, the guns they have here. There's, like, a mailbox one. Yeah. <laughs> That's There's a bunch of really is. useless gimmicky guns, too. 
Uh, what? My favorite one is the one that turns all the enemies into chickens. <laughs> I would love that gun. Who needs violence when you have chickens? Um, well, then you go up and kick the chicken to death. Oh, but, yeah. okay. Yeah. This isn't Zelda physics or Zelda no. uh, thing rules here. Um, oh, the chicken dies in one hit. Do you have a favorite character? Uh, the Marine, because he starts with armor. He starts with the best gun. Ah. He starts with better aiming. Uh, honestly, I haven't found a reason to play any of the other characters. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's good. Good enough for me. I don't think they've balanced it very well. <laughs> I guess if you're the pilot, you get to have a chance of unlocking keyholes. And so if you're a really lucky person, which I am not, then he would probably be the best pick. I don't know. I just think the Marine. Sounds like a plan. Yes. And Dunkey did do a video on it, uh, James. So you should you should watch it. OK, it's pretty funny. I may have watched it, but I may have forgotten. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was uploaded two months ago. Anyway, we like Dunkey. He's funny. Um, anyway. Uh, I guess that'll do it for us this week, folks. Uh, before we end the episode, we'd just like to say thanks for joining us. Uh, your support means a whole lot. Uh, come follow us on Twitter, um, at Nintensity, and let us know what you think about the Nintendo Switch Online service. You can also come talk about Nintendo stuff on our Discord server. We got some fun, fabulous Nintendo fans eager to chat with you there. Uh, check it out, nintendo.city slash Discord. And patrons on Patreon can get access to a supporter-only chat to help us make decisions about the show, website, and some more stuff. Speaking of Patreon, I'd like to shout out to our patrons Chris, Chase, Rat MVP, Mayako, and Joseph. Thank you for your continued support of the show. If you want to support the show, get early access to our podcast episodes and more, be sure to check it out at patreon.com slash Nintensity. Yeah, and we've been doing a micro uh, series of episodes each week just for our Patreon supporters. It's called Virtual Boy Micro, and we talk about some random topic each week that may or may not have to do with Nintendo. Uh, we're not sure what we're going to talk about this week, but you can <laughs> bet your bottom dollar it's going to be real good. Anyway, you can access that at patreon.com slash Nintensity. Don't forget to check out our YouTube page. I just mentioned how I'm excited to play Torna. Well, I am so excited I made a video about it. So if you want to know what my thoughts are, how Torna can compare to the main game, uh, go check it out and uh, look forward to some more videos coming up. If you like what you see, give us a little subscribe. The music that you listen to, by the way, is uh, made by Skylar. And that's at the beginning of this podcast and the end of the podcast, all made by Skylar, our talented host or co-host, post his music on his SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash Skytar with a five instead of an S. And again, thank you so much for tuning into the Virtual Boys podcast this week. Please uh, share the show with your friends and leave a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever they call that thing now. Um, check out our website at nintencity.com and our show notes will be at nintend.city slash ep110. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. See ya. Goodbye, you good people.